What's up, YouTube and X Matt A here. Let's be real for a second. We don't care about all the other stuff. Okay, we have, you know, four tiers of difficulty. The difficulties are all uniform. They're all linked to the pits. The pit level is basically standardized leveling in Diablo 2.0. So basically, whatever level you get to in the pit, your entire world is going to be that level. You no longer have to worry about, oh, I'm only in tier three. Once you get to uh, Torment one, you can get all the gear that you want. It just gets more and more frequent the, the higher up you go. All bosses are whatever level you're in. So this is great for the game. There's all kinds of quality life improvements. There's a tab for things. There's a tab for certain item materials. And like I said, the best thing is that the dungeon keys you can use at any difficulty. So basically what it means is, if I get to, you know, I'm level 60 in the pits and I open up Torment 1, everything I do on my level is Torment 1 and I get the the, uh, the Ancestral drops. Everything is, you know, Torment. There's no more sacred items or is it sacred and ancestral? Whatever. I get no more like useless drops. I get no more nothing. I have the item power. I can get anything that I want and all basically it's like being in hell in Diablo 2 is that everything is equal so if i go fight duriel it's duriel's gonna be the level that i'm at if i go to torment four if i'm level you know 100 and something in the pits and i get torment four opened up then duriel's gonna be that duriel's gonna be on you know torment four basically so it's all equalized out that means you won't get bored as soon as soon as you get to the pit level to where you're in torment one, you won't get bored because essentially you're getting the same items. You're just pushing the difficulty and pushing your character up. So to me, that's a great choice. And then they bump the levels back down to 60, which is good. And you get 10 more Paragon points than you usually do. And you have a finite number of Paragon boards. And this stops you from wanting to make sure you go to certain nodes. And then your Glyph gets basically, you can level up your gl Glyph a second time. So it expands twice, all that good stuff. But let's be honest, what we really care about, what we really want to hear about are rune words. All that other stuff is great and all, but let's see how they did rune words. Let's take a look and I'll give you my reaction as a Diablo 2 veteran. Soul of what Diablo 2 rune words did, which is combining socketable components and creating more powerful items. Um, but we also wanted to do something that felt appropriately fresh and new. And we wanted to lean into what's unique about the modern game. And there's a lot of good sort of nostalgic feelings. They were popular, they were remembered fondly. You can look on the right, that's one of the most iconic um, examples from Diablo 2. Uh, the, 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 the name is Enigma ja and you would make it with Burr. runes, Ja If Burr, and it would get you some, some really Yo, cool do, do, skills that would come out of it when you put it all together. Um, and for, for Diablo 4, we wanted to retain the soul of what Diablo 2 rune words did, which is combining socketable components and creating more powerful items. That's fair, right? Because you don't want to exactly copy the D2 system. We're going to get into how they did it here. I'm not sure I like the new system, but it's true. You can't just copy the D2 system because you'll see with the D2 rune words that the fonts are all out of order. The specs, they do all kinds of crazy stuff, right? So it's true. They basically... I don't want to say dumbed it down, but they created their, their, their like Diablo 4 give and take system. I'm not sure I like it that much. Um, but we also wanted to do something that felt appropriately fresh and new. And we wanted to lean into what's unique about the modern game to make the Diablo 4 version of Rune Words and make it stand on its own. And you can mix, mix and match these. There'll be a lot of different Runes of Ritual and Runes of Invocation, and you can put them together as you see fit. So when you combine a Rune of Ritual and Rune of Invocation, you pair them together, you put them in an item with two sockets, boom, you form, form a Rune Word. And as you can tell, there's going to be rarity. We're going to have magic, rare, and legendary, and the higher rarity runes will have more potent conditions or effects. So one of the, one of the important elements of this is called Offering, which is the Rune Resource System. So your Runes of Ritual will generate Offering, and they're meant to feed into their linked runes of invocation so that they can consume that offering. And the sort of more demanding rituals that we would ask of you as a player gain you more offering. At the same time, the more powerful invocations that you would try to get require more offering. And so there's sort of a sort of like shared economy there. So if you can look at these runes on the right, you get 50 offering for casting a skill with a cooldown. And this rune only requires 25 offering for it to trigger. 
That's where overflow comes in. And basically the abridged version of room words is you always have a two socket. You always need to have two sockets and your weapon, your helm or whatever. And the room words combine together and there's basically a generator and a spender. Okay. So that's what they mean by unique Diablo four thing. I don't know how I feel about that. I'm sick of generator spenders, if you ask me. But you see here, the good thing is we do have a job. We do have an ohm. There is a vex as well. So they are bringing back the old runes because if they didn't, we would have had a revolt, dude. Diablo 2 players would have had a fit if they didn't do that, right? And basically, you could, you know the usual. You can only have one unique room, room word on per time. You basically have a generator and a spender. The generators can uh, build up and have overflow so when you when you activate your your spender you can activate certain skills you can activate skills from other classes okay so you can teleport like you, if you had the enigma you could teleport in this if you if you have the room word right the right room word you can generate enough uh I, i'll just call it mana you generate enough mana by uh casting a spell or doing whatever there's some kind of action you have to do and one of them it's every time you cast a skill with a cooldown you get a gen you get essence. Okay. All right. So basically if I have a room word, okay. And it gives me teleport after I uh, have 400 mana, I have to cast this cooldown spell four times. And then I get 400 mana. When I get 400 mana, I can cast a teleport or some other kind of a flurry, whatever, a meteor, something like that. So you can cast other class skills. They do have passes where they give you plus two to skills as well, like they did in Diablo uh, 2. So they do have the plus to skills. They do have Jaw, Ohm, and Vex. You combine them together, right? You can only have one word per. The coolest part is the rune words stack. They do stack. So we have stackable rune words. They're in a separate tab. They do not take up inventory space. That was crucial because in Diablo 2, that is the worst thing is having to stack all of these runes you can combine three runes to upgrade the rune just like in diablo 2 there's a rare there's a magic and there's a legendary rune of course they do that for everything in diablo 4 there's a, a magic a rare a legendary of everything including glyphs all right so we have that going on we have the stash tabs we have the stacking runes rune words start start dropping early so you can collect them just like in diablo 2 so you'll get magic runes and then you can combine them over time to create rare runes and then you can combine the rare runes to create unique runes drop rate i'm not sure about the drop rate i'm guessing they drop uh you know semi often not the drop rate's not as bad as Diablo 2, okay? Let's put it that way. It's not going to, you're not a 1 in 85,000 chance to get a Burr Rune and Cow level, okay? It's not like that. So it's not as bad as that. And here we'll take a look at some of the gameplay with the Rune words. Items with two sockets. Um, we've added a uh, new, uh, another item to get two sockets for Vessel of Hatred. Uh, the, uh, so you'll have your helm, your two-hander, your gloves, and sorry, your helm, two-hander, pants, and uh, chest. Um, they can only be paired with a rune of the opposite type. So you have to pair a rune of ritual with a rune of invocation. You can have a maximum of two rune words equipped. You can't equip the same rune twice. And they're available for users who own Vessel of Hatred. Um, they stack in your inventory in the new socketable inventory tab, which will also have your gems. And runes are tradable between other players who own Vessel of Hatred. Uh, and they unlock with a quest in the campaign, um, both runes dropping from as loot, but also rune crafting, which we'll get into later. Um, and uh, they drop at a higher rate in the Undercity, which is a specific place you can farm them. So now let's get into some clips here. We get to actually see it in action. So this is a barbarian and the rune of ritual they have is travel five meters, very simple. And they're gonna join that to the earthquake, which is a legendary aspect that you've already seen before, which requires a hundred offerings. So you see, we'll put them together in this item. And then all they have to do is just run around. Boom, Earthquake, dropping. Insane with the Paragon Legendary Glyph we just talked about. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The Earthquake train is leaving the station. <laughs> so they do. So one rune basically is a generator, one is a spender. I'm mixed about that, but as you can see, when you're going through the game naturally, it's just casting stuff like it would in D2 because D2 had a percentage chance to cast the stuff. So it's kind of working similar to D2 in a way because you'll have your generator, you'll have your spender, but you're going through the regular gameplay, right? And you're just 
casting and spending, casting and spending, and you can see the earthquakes are casting. They're they're procking, right? But it looks very natural, so it is encouraging. It's kind of weird that they only have two slots for the rune words, and it's a little bit weird that they have a generator spender. Like I said, I don't I don't like the whole generator spender gameplay, but it is a unique feeling. It is something unique to Diablo 4, where it's not something Path of Exile has. It's not something that any of the other ARPGs have. So this is kind of innovative for Diablo 4 for Blizzard. This is a good way overall to do rune words. The best thing about the rune words is that they stack. The runes stack in this. And if you played Diablo 2, you know those runes, dude. They take up all of your stash tabs. Oh, my God. And then you have to just throw away low-level runes. In this, the runes are dropping at all levels, just like Diablo 2. And you could have three rares upgrade to, uh, you know, a legendary. Three magics upgrade to a rare, right? So, typical Diablo 4 fashion, we have magic, rare, and legendary right and if you have three of each they upgrade to the next one just like they did in diablo 2 there is a ohm there is a vex there is a jaw so they do have some of the old runes if they didn't diablo 2 players would have had a revolt man if they didn't create didn't have the old runes let's keep what going. i love about this is it doesn't it doesn't just count your your normal walking right if you're leaping if you're charging that's all counting towards like the distance that you're For moving sure. right Oh, yeah. whoa. And you, yeah, uh, you can see it video. here in like the whirlwind, oh. for instance, like it's obviously spawning was, earthquakes. So. Was that a druid petrify ultimate? That's this is this must be the wrong clip. All right. Sorry, guys. You know, if we're doing it live, let's just move on to the next one. <clears throat> um, OK, and you can see he casted the, uh, the druid ultimate skill petrify. So they do have passives that cast all the time. And then they do have the generator spenders and they do have runes that give you just plus two to skills. And we should see some. Right, so we of have that a necromancer here. here with the rune of ritual cast a non channel core skill, oh, getting twenty five each. And then this is a classic from D two, pl gain plus three to all skills. And this um, is the one I'm talking about. So you'll just get give to you see plus three to skills. This necro's got five uh, five skill ranks for reap and sever. And they're gonna go, just gonna go out and. That is good. That means in this game, skill ranks are going to matter again, like in Diablo 2. So I'm pretty sure they're reworking the skill tree so that plus skills actually matter more. Because if you remember in uh, Diablo 2, skills mattered a lot. That was the number one thing you wanted to get. And it looks like in this game, they are doing that. They are making plus skills very useful. There's a lot of other weapons or, you know, uniques. There is a uh, mythical uh, helmet that gives you plus one to all passives. And they say it's really powerful because you get plus one to all passives. So it seems like that's the direction they're going in. They're making plus skills more useful, which means you're going to want a Shaco even more than you ever did before. You're going to want the Shaco in this one. Casual socket of a Harlequin crest. Pretty good. <laughs> So a little pew pew, just doing your basic uh, core skill usage, filling up the offering needed. Yeah, I really like the the little tracking buff that, that fills up as you as you're getting it. So you don't need to really micromanage this. You can just at a glance see that hey, I just filled it up yeah. and now I get plus three ranks of sever. Yep. So now you're a plus three. And what there they're talking about is down here. You can oh. you can see the little buff yeah, symbols this, down there and it tells you what you're generating and, uh, and what, how much how many. How many skills oh, you can spend. Is this another another Wait. broken clip? Did he just cast teleport? What it what? <laughs> okay, I I, 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 I think second. I think you teleporting guys necros. What are you cooking over there, G? Ah, and that's great. We get to have teleport on other characters. That's fun, as we know from Enigma. That is gonna be kind of fun. Yeah, I'll stop making jokes mostly. Ja, um, um. Yeah, so what we really wanted to lean into with D2 Rune Words, among other things, was the ability to cast other classes' skills and use their power and harness it into your build. So with Rune Words, you're going to get to do that. Uh, each class is going to share two skills and one legendary aspect, like the, uh, the Earthquake one that you saw. Um, and some of them are even going get, to get to cast improved versions. So for instance, you know, instead of um, the standard Decrepify from the Necromancer, you get to cast Horrid Decrepify, which is the upgraded version. And that's kind of, we did that for a lot of reasons. You know, we wanted to make some of them feel a little better and a little more powerful. And a lot of it is about balance. But one important thing that I always want to um, highlight here 
is that you always cast the best version of the skill if you have upgrades as the sort of home owner of the class, right? So what that means is, let's say you're a spirit born and you equip the cry that makes rune, sense. which is the vortex spell. If you have points into the upgrade, um, then you'll cast the upgraded vortex when the rune goes off. So I don't think there'll be any class envy, you know, like everyone will get the best version of their own skills and then they'll get to use other classes skills. So you've seen that, you heard that now, I can tell you what I'm most excited about is the rune stacking. That's pretty sad. I don't know if that's sad or good, right? That the most thing that I'm most excited for is that the rune stack. I do like that they're simplified. I like that they're more obtainable. I like that they're they're going to add a lot of power, as you can see. And it does remind me of D2. Now, if you don't know, when Diablo 2 Lord of Destruction came out, it added rune words. It added more sets. So basically, this is kind of uh, replicating that feeling. They wanted to replicate that feeling. And Lord of Destruction is like Diablo 2.0 because before Lord of Destruction, people don't realize this, Diablo 2 sucked. Like as far as loot goes, your best weapon pre-Lord of Destruction was having a six-socketed ruby sword to do hell cows. It was awful. Lord of Destruction came along and made it so much better. We saw that too with Diablo 3 Reaper Souls. It is better. Diablo always like pushes the envelope with these expansions. So I'm super excited. This is all the more reason why I didn't play season five because I knew they were going to do some crazy like this, right? As far as the uh, what I think about the room words, um, I have mixed feelings on the generator spender, right? So you have to generate the spend. On the flip side, when we saw the gameplay of it, it was very fluid and you have the buffs on the bottom of your bar. So I'm thinking that you're not really going to pay attention to that too much, right? You're just going to have a good build with a good rotation and you're just going to be casting all kinds of skills. I like that plus skills are becoming more valuable, that that is becoming a thing. They really are giving us the D2 gameplay and combining it with D3 and making it unique with Diablo 4. So overall, I think Diablo 2.0 is very innovative. I think it combines all three Diablos together. And some people might say, oh, the pits you're pushing, you know, Torment 4. But if you look at it from a Diablo 2 perspective, you're shrinking back the levels, right? So you're, you're, you're raining all that craziness in. You're shrinking the damage numbers. You're getting everything back to uh, that you're grounding the game. So Diablo 2.0 is grounding the game and it's making progression fun no matter what level you are, because whatever level you are in the pit, your world level becomes that, right? You are in that world level. So if I'm in Torment 2 and I go fight Uber Dur Duriel, I have the chance to get the same drops as if I was in Torment 1. If I was in Torment 3 or 4, it just you just get increased chances and more experience in those other tiers. Whispers are all upgraded. World bosses are all upgraded too, which is really good. So if I'm in Torment 3, my Whispers are going to be Torment 3. My Helltide's going to be Torment 3, right? Everything, world bosses are going to be Torment 3. My dungeons, everything that you do. Uh, Infernal Hordes, there's no more leveling keys, different level keys or dust or any of that crap. You have keys for the dungeons, that's it. There's no level. Whatever, whatever level you set your world on, that's the level you're going to get for the dungeons. There's no more... Hey, I got a level 30, you know, glyph, a uh, dungeon uh, key. I can't use it because I'm in world tier uh, four instead of three. None of that. All that's gone. All that's QOL changes. Really good quality of life. Diablo 2.0, knocking it out of the park. And I will say it combines all three Diablos together. At, well, you know, four, three, and two, not one. And I do like the way they're going with the room words. It's a little, it's a little simplified but it is unique to Diablo 4. That's the video. I'm super excited for this. This is going to be great. I'm telling you all, if you if you never played Diablo 2 vanilla and went to Lord of Destruction, you are in for a treat. You are going to be floored by this expansion. It is going to change the entire game. Trust me, trust me, trust me, trust me. This is going to do for Diablo 4 what Lord of Destruction did, 1.09, did for Diablo 4. Two, you are going to be floored. This is coming from a Diablo veteran. This is going to be one of the, the greatest expansions in gaming history. That's the video. Like, subscribe. Thanks.